Hi, this is Tor from Ipcon. Today we're going to talk about preventing maintenance of spare parts. Uh, you may see me look down a little bit here because I'm looking at the slides I'm, I'm going to show you on the screen here. But um, I put together a few slides around preventing maintenance of spare parts because we see a lot of reliability problems in the plant, mines, and mills that we visit. Um, so I'm just going to give a few examples of, of typical things we see that really impacts reliability. Uh, the first slide, let's take a look at that, it's a physical storage here, per I call it perishable goods. Uh, typically it's rubber and plastic parts. So as you see here in a few of the pictures, you, we see um, conveyor belts laying out in the sun, stored in the sun, a, in a very dusty environment. And of course, rule of thumb is rubber and plastic last for about five years. I mean, of course, it depends on the temperature you store them in and so forth and so forth and what kind of material it is. Um, the Dodge or the tire couplings, um, as you see in the picture there, those are typically labeled. It says how long they last for in an ideal storage environment. Uh, the last picture you see there is also rolls stored outside. Of course, those have, have, have rubber covers. So those are not stored properly, of course. Um, so that's a very typical thing. And you can imagine the reliability issues we get by storing the parts outside like that. We may cut life. I don't know exactly because it depends on the heat and, the, and, and how long and so forth. But it may go from five years to one or two years. Of course, uh, they're going to break faster when we put them on the equipment, right? The next slide is just, uh, I'm just copying basically the next slide here from SKF. They have their recommendations straight from their handbook on how to store bearings. And that's something that we forget. Some of us rarely read that, but it needs to be a vibration free area, which is hard to find in our plants and mines, I know, but as well as we can. Um, sometimes I see storerooms that may not be vibration free. We may try to move them in long term, but short term, we may put a little rubber mat underneath the bearings, whatever it may be, right? Um, controlled temperature, certain humidity, we keep them in original pack. Remember, lubricants are also very um, perishable. They have fixed life. Lubricants just last so long. It depends on the lubricants and so forth. But ask yourself, are, are we storing our bearings correctly? Are we doing this right? Uh, do we open them? Here's a couple of pictures from, from plants that we visit on the third slide. We see bearings completely open. Um, sometimes even, in some cases, they have unwrapped them and put them on the shelf, which is a little bit unusual, but we've seen that, right? And we see open packs, people looking for bearings, they open it when they're looking for if it's the right bearing and then put it back and all they need to do is maybe put it in another zip lock, but we just keep it open so we get the dust and the, the lubricants dry up and so forth. Another example, you know, these are easy to check, uh, electronics and hy hydraulics. Electrical, electronics and hydraulics obviously needs to be keep, kept clean. Hydraulics have clearances inside them that are maybe three to six microns typically. So any dust is damaging to them. Of course, electronics does not like dust. Ideally, these pieces of equipment should really, or parts should be stored in a, um, pressurized room with filters and so forth, but at least they need to be cool, clean, um, air conditioned, and um, and of course they need these parts need to be also wrapped so they, they're protected from, from the dirt. Uh, and this is an extremely poor example that we see here in this picture, right? So that's just checking that for perishable goods and so maybe checking for your hydraulic uh, and electrical equipment, are they stored correctly? And you can imagine if you have a lot of parts, it's a huge uh, issues from the reliability if we don't do this right. Another thing we have is um, motor shafts. Um, this is just an example of a client that did it really well. They they had the months, the one, two, three, four, five, up to 12 is of course a month. So they have a dot and they try to spin the shafts because if the bearing sits vertically, I'm gonna call it, of course, and the bearing sits on one spot, what's gonna happen is that you get what it's not a real world word, but we say we call it brunelling, right? That the bearing brunels, meaning fatigue, fatigue issues with the surface of the bearing if it's the ball sits or the roll sits in the same spot all the time. Therefore, we need to rotate the shaft. We typically recommend one full turn and then two the month. So this is an easy example. So you can go in and look in your storeroom. Are shafts turned 
at least out so you can get to them. Um, are they rotated on some type of frequency? Uh, what are we doing with our motor shafts? And then we wonder why motor bearings don't last, right? Um, and of course, I'm not. Get, this is a whole topic by itself, but this is another good example. Go in and look at your storage of lubricants. Lubricants does have a do have a fixed life. Um, they just last for so long. But of course, handling. Do we get clean lubricants into our storeroom? Because purchased lubricants are not always clean. Do we filter them? Do we keep them clean? Do we have open containers or are they closed, etc.? Another type of storage. We can go on and on about storage, but this video was just really to pique your interest in going out, looking at your own storeroom and see, do you really take care of your spare parts? If you don't, that's where a lot of the troubles in the plant and uh, mine often begins. Anyways, thanks for listening to this video and uh, good luck with your spare parts. Thank you.